In this next video, we're going to take a look at the pH of the equivalence point between a weak acid versus a strong base titration. When you take a look at the diagram, you will see that as we approach the equivalence point, where the number of moles of acid is equal to the number of moles of base, it differs slightly from that of the strong acid versus strong base. Instead of being at a pH of 7, if we extrapolate it back, it is actually found at a slightly higher pH, in this case around 8.72. We will take a look at the calculation and see why we end up with a pH that is slightly higher than a pH of 7, even though we know that the amount of acid is now completely neutralized by the base. So in this example, we're now going to have 100.0 milliliters of a 0 0.1 molar NaOH is added to 100.0 milliliters of a 0 0.1 molar CH3COOH. Now, if you take a look at the previous calculation, you will see that the wording that I have used is very, very similar. However, one of the first things you need to do when you um, start completing your calculations is to examine what the chemicals are that you are using. Depending on the type of chemical and what you have identified them to be is going to affect the approach that you will take in completing your calculations. So once again, the first thing that we have to deal with is the actual reaction or the stoichiometric reaction itself. So here, we're going to have NaOH plus CH3COOH giving me NaCH3COO plus H2O. Now once again, using our modified ice chart, we're going to get 0 0.01 mole of NaOH. 0 0.01 mole of CH3COOH and at present we have no um, sodium acetate and we have no water. Once again you can see that the number of moles of NaOH is now equal to the number of moles of acetic acid and so therefore we can anticipate that there is no limiting reagent and there is no reagent that is excess. And so here we're going to subtract 0 0.01 from the acid and the base, and we're now going to add 0 0.01 mole of our sodium acetate, and we're going to add 0 0.01 mole of our H2O. So here we're going to get 0, we're going to get 0, we're now going to get 0 0.01, and we're going to get 0 0.01. So when we take a look here at the NaOH combining with the acetic acid, we're going to yield sodium acetate and water. One of the things that you will notice is, is that we have run out of all of the base and we have also run out of all of the weak acid. So for all intents and purposes, you can say that it is very similar to the strong acid versus strong base. So given that we have no more base left and no more acid left, then the water is going to um, establish an equilibrium and produce our hydrogen ions and therefore we're going to create a solution with a pH of 7. In this case, it doesn't work that way because we have our weak acid, which is CH3COOH or our acetic acid. Now, one thing to note is that when you have a weak acid, when you form the conjugate base, so in this case, the conjugate base is the CH3COO, your conjugate base actually is stronger, a stronger base, meaning that it will react slightly. In contrast, when you have your NaOH, which is a strong base, and you form the Na, which is, in a way, your conjugate acid, because the conjugate acid comes from a strip, very strong base, it will not choose to react. So the Na will remain as a spectator ion, but the acetate, CH3COO, is now going to react. And in this case, its reaction is going to be reacting with water. So now we're going to form an equilibrium. And so the equilibrium is going to start off with our conjugate base.
and it is going to react with water and an equilibrium is going to form and you're now going to form CH3 COOH plus OH minus. Now one of the things that you want to make a note of is the fact that I have not written the Na and the reason why I left it out is because the Na is a spectator ion and therefore will not engage in any further reaction. So now we're going to draw our ice chart. Now in this case, the ice chart, we're going to have to find the concentration and, in, and this is going to be the concentration of our acetate ion. And so what we're going to have to take a look at is the CH3COO- is going to equal to 0 0.01 mole divided by 0 0.2000 liters and so our final answer is 0 0.05 molar. So we place our value, our initial value of 0 0.05. We ha don't worry about the water. There is currently no acidic acid because according to our first reaction we have used it all up and there is no OH. Now, once again, according to Le Chatelet's principle, you're going to have the equilibrium shift right, thus producing some of the acetic acid and also some hydroxide ion. And so now you get 0 0.05 minus x, you have x and you have x. Now comes our calculation with the equilibrium expression. But note here that we produced hydroxide and therefore when we are now taking a look at the calculation we're not going to be using Ka but rather we're going to be using Kb and so here we're going to have CH3 COOH and we multiply it by the OH all over CH3 COO minus. Now if you take a look at your acid um, acid um, equilibrium constant table, you'll notice that we are not given the Kb, but we are given the Ka, and in this case the Ka is for the conjugate acid of acid, acetic acid, and so we have 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. So if we now convert this to Kb, it's going to be equal to Kw over Ka, and so we get 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14 divided by 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. And so when we work this out, this is going to equal to 5.6 times 10 to the minus 10. So now what we're going to do is we're going to work out the concentration of our hydroxide ion. So we have 5.6 times 10 to the minus 10 is equal to x all squared all over 0 0.05 minus x. Now, if we compare the initial concentration with that of the Kb, we can see that our initial concentration is significantly larger. Therefore, this x over here can be considered very small. So as we work this out, we're going to have x, which is the concentration of the OH minus, is going to equal to 5.29 times 10 to the minus 6 molar. So we can go ahead and find the POH, which is going to be negative log of 5.29 times 10 to the minus 6 and we get 5.28. So in order to find the pH, what we have is we have 14 minus pOH. So in this case it will be 14 minus 5.28 and our final answer is 8.72. So as you can see when we look back to this calculation, indeed, we did end up canceling up or using up all of the NaOH as well as the acetic acid. However, because of the presence of a stronger conjugate base, we now have an equilibrium that is being established in the water that remains. And so this equilibrium is now going to generate your hydroxide ion and the hydroxide ion is going to now change the pH from pH of 7 to something slightly higher and in this case it will be a pH of 8.72 because the equilibrium produced some hydroxide ions. In contrast, when we take a look at the strong acid strong base, 
you see that because there is no equilibrium from the conjugate uh, base or even the conjugate acid, what you have is you have the equilibrium from water right over here. And because the water's equilibrium constant is 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14, when you take the square root and you find the pH, you now end up with a pH of 7.